Hey guys, back in May of 2019, we did a video telling you how to build a rodent breeding rack. In that video, we promised you guys that we were going to show you how to set up an automatic watering system. Well, it's been a little over a year, so we're slightly late, but we're gonna fulfill that promise in this video today and teach you exactly how to do that. Now, for those of you guys who wanna work along with us, we do have a kit available that will provide for you everything you need. We will put a link down in the description of this video of how you can purchase that kit, and let's get started setting up our automatic watering system. All right, so we're gonna go over some of the things that you're going to need tool-wise. Now, first of all, if it's early in the morning like it is here, you're gonna need a good hot cup of coffee. Second of all, you're gonna need a bucket. Now, it can be a five gallon bucket, you can use a two gallon bucket or three, however much water you want to hold at a time. We prefer the five gallon buckets because it allows our rack to stay full for about a week. Also, you're gonna need a drill, possibly a Dremel tool. You're gonna to need a drill bit and you're gonna need a good sharp pair of shears or scissors. Now, in your kit, you're going to receive your black watering tube, mounting clips with the screws, your water valves, the clips for mounting the water valves to the cage. You're also going to receive this little kit here that goes into the bucket that draws the water out of the bucket. Also, you're gonna need a few of these T-fittings, which these also come in the clip, and you're also gonna need at least one L-fitting. All right, so the first two things you're gonna to wanna to do is get your bucket that you're going to use to hold your water. Now, this bucket is gonna be placed up high. We usually place it up on the top of our rack like this, but we've got to put a hole in this bucket. Now, one of the things that I will highly recommend to you is to put your hole near the bottom, but not all the way on the bottom. And the reason for that is because if you get any type of sediment in your bucket, you want to give a little bit of settling space before um, you put this in to allow that sediment to settle down in the bottom of the bucket. So we're going to go up about three quarters of an inch and we're going to drill our hole to put this piece in. Now the piece that we're putting in is going to be this and what you're going to want to do is simply unscrew this right here and remove this white piece off of the back. You'll notice you have this little rubber gasket on the back of this. You want to make sure that doesn't fall off. That little rubber gasket is important because when it goes up against the bucket, this is what's going to prevent you from getting any leaks. Uh, you'll notice that this little piece right here is threaded. Now they do make a tool that's similar to a drill bit that you can actually buy that will thread your bucket so that this piece can screw in. Um, we don't have one of those. What we do have is a half inch drill bit. Now this half inch drill bit is going to be slightly too small for this to go in as you can see. So what we recommend doing is starting with a hole that's too small and then we'll use a Dremel tool to round that hole out just a little bit at a time because you want this thing to fit very very snug in order to prevent a leak. So we're gonna go ahead, use a half inch drill bit and drill a hole into the side of our bucket. Now we wanna take our Dremel tool and just slightly round this hole out, little bit at a time until this thing fits in there extremely snug. Now I'm gonna take my scissors and just kind of go around this and clean up some of that plastic, especially off of the inside here. And then we're gonna test fit this piece again. I'm gonna put it right here and you can see it is almost big enough. So now what I'm gonna do is just start twisting this piece until those threads catch. Once those threads catch on the inside of my bucket, then I'm able to go ahead and screw this into the bucket all the way in until my rubber gasket seals and we have no leaks. So next you wanna take this little white piece that you unscrewed in the beginning, come to the inside of your bucket and you wanna screw it in from the back right here. Go ahead and turn that as tight as you can get it. 
Um, usually you can do this by hand and snug it up. If not, you can get a uh, wrench, but I will warn you, this thing is made out of plastic, so be gentle with it. Go ahead and tighten that up. Once you get that tightened on the inside, you want to take your bucket out to a garden hose, fill it full of water, and you want to test to make sure you don't have any leaks. Now, prior to uh, actually test or putting water in this, we do recommend that you thoroughly wash and disinfect your bucket. Even if it was brand new purchased from a store, go ahead and wash it out, disinfect it, make sure that there's no chemical residue for your rodents. All right, so once you get this installed and you pour some water in here, um, you wanna take a towel or something and just dry your bucket off. Make sure there's no water around this area whatsoever. Now what you wanna do over the next few minutes is just observe this and make sure there's no water leakage around here. If you're gonna have a problem anywhere in your system, normally this is where it's gonna start. It's gonna start by dripping right here. Now this piece right here is what's gonna allow the water to escape. You notice with this piece in, the water's not escaping the bucket. This right here is what's going to open this valve and allow the water to go into our tubing. By placing this right here and turning it, as you can see, the water begins to come out. So we're going to take this off and set it aside for now. And we're going to go ahead and prepare our rack with our black tubing. Now in your kit, you're going to have a long piece of tubing like this. It's going to be about six foot long. And you're gonna want this piece. Now it's gonna come as one long piece in order to avoid any confusion. And you're also gonna have these shorter pieces right here. And you're gonna have six or seven of these depending on how many uh, tub spaces you have. You're gonna have one for each tub space. So once we get these pieces here, what we wanna start by doing is we're gonna go ahead and place our bucket up on the top of our rack. We're gonna work everything in this from the bucket downward. Now, something you can do if you want to is cut a piece of plywood and set across the top uh, and let your bucket sit in the middle or you can simply use uh, the framing of your uh, rack to put your bucket up here. But you're gonna wanna turn this piece right here out towards the front. Now, at this point in time, you're gonna wanna go ahead and make sure that your bucket has no water in it because we're gonna put this piece right here in here and if your bucket has water in it it's going to come shooting out on you so we're going to go ahead and stick this piece here now we're going to work our way down and you're going to want to take your six foot piece of tubing and you're going to cut this several times but we're going to start by coming off of this right here so we're going to go ahead and put this on right here and push it all the way back so now you can see we put our tube on and we pushed all the way back now depending on how far back you place your bucket you're gonna have to cut this because we're gonna need our first T fitting right here all right now this step right here is gonna be completely optional it's up to you but I like to let my bucket sit on a piece of shelf board so I'm gonna go up on the top here and I'm going to place a piece of shelf board right across the top of my rack and then I'm gonna set my bucket back a little bit. This will allow my feeder tray here to remain uh, unhindered. I won't have a bucket sitting over it. I'm just gonna slide the bucket back a little ways and then I'm going to adjust everything from this position. All right, so we've got our tube running out right here and it's coming down, it's all one piece. We're gonna turn our attention now to setting up these guys. Now you have these little clips right here and these clips are what's gonna hold these little valves into your tub so that your rodents can drink. The way you're gonna wanna set these up is with this facing down, you want the tip of the water, that's the one that has this little needle right here, it's gonna be facing the same direction as these by placing it right there and that will be held in place by your tubing. Now next you wanna take a piece of your tubing. This is the little short pieces that come in your kit. And it really does help if you wet these or moisten them somehow. And uh, because I'm not a germaphobe, I usually just uh, 
simply wet them that way. Slide this on all the way, push it all the way down like so, and now that holds everything in place. And you're gonna do this for each of your fittings. So now you've got all of these set up and we're going to need one of these little T fittings. So this is one of your T fittings and this is one of your assemblies for the water valve. What you want to want to do is make sure you're running up and down this way. You have the one that's going out to the side. This is the one that you want to put in here so that you still have the up and down here and the one facing sideways is the one that's going to connect to the end of this piece. And we want to do this to all of your assemblies for your water valves. All right, so we've got all of these. Now, when you get down to the end, you're only gonna have one of these left and you're gonna have one of these. We wanna go ahead, put this one together, and then the very last one, you're not gonna have a T-fitting for that one. The very last one, you're gonna put on an L-fitting like this. So the very last one that's gonna go on the bottom is gonna have this one. All right, so once you get this one assembled with the L fitting, go ahead and set it aside because you're not gonna need this one to the very end. So the way this is gonna work, the water's coming out of this right here. So we're going to need our water valve to attach to this line. We're gonna attach it by this. This is gonna allow the water to come from here and to go this way to go to this. So what we wanna do is go ahead first and attach this to the actual rack itself. All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and tell you, when these clips are brand new, they can be a little bit of a pain in the butt because they're stiff. As you use them and they get broke in, it becomes a little easier. But what you wanna do is hook this end right here down inside of your hardware cloth like so. You wanna clip it right here on the back and then take this side, bend it in, clamp right there, and now you're hooked in and it won't go anywhere. This will allow access to your rats right here, and then this piece runs to your main. Now one final thing, <clears throat> when you consider where to place this, you wanna make sure that your line is going to fit all the way out to your main water tube. Uh, you don't wanna put it too close because if the line goes up and back down, because this system is gravity fed, you don't need your line going like this, for instance. It needs to be at a downward angle so that the water will flow from the outside tube down to each individual tub. All right, so as we work our way down, we have all of these set up, and of course we've got all of our T fittings up and down in every one of these positions here. We're gonna work our way down. We're gonna connect our main water line to each one of these. And this is where you're gonna need that sharp pair of scissors. So we're gonna begin at the top. We're coming out of our bucket. And as the line comes down, we want to take this piece here and go ahead. And once again, we wanna make sure that you've got a downward sloping angle. If you put it down too low and you create a hump, the water's gonna have a hard time going up the hump. So make sure it's up far enough, kind of look at it, visually assess the angle of this tube, and then go ahead and take your scissors, put your finger where you can see where it comes down to this part right here. You wanna come to the top of this on your line and then make a cut right there with your scissors. Then after we make the cut, we wanna take our little T fitting here and slide the top into the piece that's coming out of our bucket all the way down till it's flush like so. Now we're gonna take the remainder of our long piece of black tubing and we're gonna go ahead and slide it on the bottom piece right here. Now once again, we have our long piece just dangling. We wanna do this again all the way down. We're going to bring this bracket out to here, this uh, T-fitting out to here. We wanna push this piece all the way back. We're gonna let it come down. We're gonna measure again, visually assessing where this needs to be. And we're gonna once again, cut our line. All right, so once you get these, we're gonna go ahead and continue to do the same thing all the way down. 
Okay, so at the very last tub down here, you notice we have all of these and we used our T fittings. Now on the very bottom one, we have this little L fitting. And the reason we don't use a T here is because this is the end. We don't need any more water to come out the bottom. We need this water to come to this one and stop. So we're gonna go ahead and put the one with the L fitting down here and attach it in place. And then once again, we're going to bring it over here. We're gonna assess where our main tube needs to be cut and we're gonna clip it right there. So we're gonna bring our main water line down and we're gonna attach it to that L fitting like so. Now once you get done, you'll probably have a little piece of black tubing left over. We would encourage you to actually save this. Don't discard it just in case the event that one of these was to get clogged one day, you'd have an extra piece to replace it. All right, so now you've got everything in place here and all of this stuff is just sort of dangling. So now what you wanna do is take these little clips right here and they also come with a screw. And basically what you wanna do is just put these on here like so and you can pretty much put these anywhere you want to. I like to put them just below where the lines run off and then you can go ahead and screw these in place. That'll hold everything together nicely and keep your line from just dangling everywhere like so. tubing uh, screwed into place. We want to go ahead and fill up our five gallon bucket and we want to test each individual level to make sure our water is coming out appropriately. All right, so I should tell you, you can remove your bucket. You don't have to leave the system hooked up simply by turning your little uh, plug here and pulling that out. You can carry it out to a garden hose or whatever, fill it up if you need to. Simply bring it back in, place it back on the top of your rack, sticking this in, and giving it about a quarter turn. You'll feel it when it kind of clicks into place. Now, the way you want to test these is simply by doing the same thing the rats will do when they want to drink. This little needle that sticks out, you just move that needle like so, and you can see that one's working. And it'll take a minute or two for your water to come down. So if it doesn't come down right away, don't worry if th there's a problem and just check each and every one of these simply by holding your finger there and you can see your finger will get wet on each one of these as the water comes out. Once again there, here, and there we got water drippage. And finally the last one, and we got water drippage there as well. All right guys, that concludes our how-to on setting up an automatic water. We hope you guys have uh, learned something from this. Once again, if you want the complete kit to do it yourself, the only thing you'll need are the tools and the five gallon bucket. Um, you can simply order that at the link down in the description. Once again, we wanna say thank you for watching Cold Blood Creations here on YouTube.